Hello. We are Pomona's 10 percenters because as of class of 2025, Pomona is only 10% black. This may or may not include international students because they don't they don't show it. But yes, we made this account. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they don't they don't differentiate, so I don't know. Anyways, we made this account for black students who are considering applying to Pomona because there's not a lot of content online regarding our experiences. And with that, we can get started with our first Q&A. So, question number one. Wait, there's not a question. <laughs> we gotta introduce ourselves. <laughs> okay. So, my name is Victoria, class 2025. I'm from Georgia, and right now I'm considering, considering a major in public policy analysis with a concentration in biology on the pre-health track. My name is Cuddy. I'm a local studying astronomy with a minor in biology, also class of 2025. Yeah. Okay. Hey, it's me. I'm Zayana. 2025. Do I have a major? No. I don't <coughs> I don't know. I'm probably gonna be one of them special major guys, you know? My bad! My bad! I forgot! I forgot. Oh shoot. You know, Kentucky. Yeehaw. Um, uh, my name is Randy. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, class of 25, and I might current major is African studies with a minor in French. I don't know why y'all laughing. <laughs> I'm I'm cutting this out. Hey, look, you're yelling. Um my name's Kamoy. Um PPE major, philosophy, politics and economics with a minor in Africana studies and English. Okay, so the first question is why did you choose Pomona? Um, the financial aid. So I knew for sure I wanted to go to a liberal arts college. I knew I was going that route because I'm indecisive. You know, research institutions tend to be more geared towards a specific avenue and you, you take that avenue and you run with it. And so I was looking at liberal arts and also visual art programs and money money too um i'm kind of along the same lines i kind of knew i wanted to go to a small school where i knew i can get the attention from professors and build a tight community with the people here uh same thing small school i think pomona's classes average about 15 or 10 to 15 students a class um also pomona's a part of a consortium so you're taking classes at uh the other four C's surrounding the area, so that's Scripps, Pitzer, Harvey Mudd, and CMC. Um, and just the overall atmosphere and of course financial aid too is great, so. Okay, I did select it because of the financial aid because all of the schools I applied to, I just knew wherever I was gonna go, they were gonna have to pay for me to go. Um, and then there was also a student at my school. When I was a sophomore, in high school, she was a sophomore here at Pomona. And she had like come and she was talking about her study abroad. Uh, she dropped in like three countries. He was here back for a day. She had just dropped by to stop and speak to the band director because my band had really like close alumni. And then she was finna get back on the plane the next day and go to Germany. So she was talking about that and then she was talking about how they were paying for her. That was the first time I heard of Pomona and it had pretty much stayed on my radar since. So it was always within like one of the top two based off of that alone and now we move on to question two what is your favorite thing about Pomona my favorite thing uh, would definitely be the professor and student interactions I feel like because you're in such a small classroom you're able to interact with your professor on a more personal level versus being in a classroom of like 200 people where you're only ever seeing your professor and they probably don't remember your name. 
Um, I know all my professors, they know me by name. And like the largest classroom that I'm in only has like 40 students. And so no matter what, I always have like one-on-one -on -one time with my professor. Um, I think along those lines is the opportunities that you have here. If you're really interested in something, you can, there are the resources here that you can have to kind of pursue whatever you're interested in. I'd also have to agree with Randy. Like there are definitely a lot of opportunities here. Um, a lot of resources here as well. So um, I definitely know that if there's something that you want to pursue, whether it's as a career or just whether you want to work with a certain professor or an organization or whatever it may be, Pomona definitely provides you with the resources and the money to, to do so. so. Um, my favorite thing about Pomona is how nice the people are. I would say people are very approachable. So anything you may need from someone, you'll probably, you know, you'll meet people. Okay. Um, I definitely agree with the sentiment that the people really make the school. Um, I know I didn't want to go to a competitive school either. And so far, everyone has been very collaborative or, well, mostly everyone has been very collaborative and willing to help and um, not stingy with their pursuits. Like when it came to applying for summer programs, people are like, oh, hey, there's this. I'm applying to this. You should also apply to this. If there's a class that might interest you, people will be like, oh, hey, I know this professor. She's doing research. You might be able to talk to her. Oh, hey, there's this on-campus job, blah, 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 blah. And you don't have to worry about someone trying to sabotage you or set you up. Um, so that was really important. I also really do appreciate the academic cohorts because I'm part of the STEM one which basically puts me in a group of other like first-gen low-income students. And we're taking our science classes together. It's sort of scheduled so our first two years, um, I had taken the intro chem and bio sequences and the people that are all in the bio class are in my chem class. So I know all of those people very well. I know the advisors very well. And it's just nice to be with other people of a same similar background and academic experience um so there's more you feel like you belong yeah that was a good one i did that okay more importantly what's your least favorite thing about pomona my least favorite thing is definitely interactions with the administration I fear that they don't necessarily, like I, for fly students in particular, it might be difficult to navigate through everything on campus, especially with administration, and I will kind of just leave it at that. I just think that administration doesn't necessarily have fly students in mind when they make decisions. I think that they make decisions based off of what will get them money in the future. And I feel like while you will have very good interactions with staff and professors and other students, you'll tend to have more negative associations with the administration here. My least favorite thing about Pomona is Mansoor. Oh. Mm -hmm. Then people are booked months out. Um, if uh, Oh, my bad. Mansoor, those are the counseling services, okay? So if you are mentally ill, you will probably remain mentally <laughs> ill yep. while you're, no, I'm being honest. Like, because one of the things that I liked about Pomona was how they advertised, oh, we have this beautiful counseling health opportunity. It's so available to everyone. It's free. You know, they're booked, they're booked. So, but you know, one thing they do have is, you know, you can find somebody outside and they'll refund you. But my thing is why y'all booked, you know? That's all, that's all. Pomona can do better. Pomona has the money to, be, to do better. Pomona has the resources to, be, to do better. And it sometimes feels and seems as if they actively choose to not do better. Um, and and that, that, is, that is a big issue. I mean, just to reiterate what everyone else said, this is, this is a white institution. So most of the systems that they have in place are not for the benefit of students of color or fly students. It's usually for the benefits of white affluent students so you're going to see that here on campus okay i guess i would like to speak more on monsoor because as someone who finally was able to get <laughs> from the trenches 
of Montsor. Yes, especially I think early fall semester and sometimes early spring semester, they are booked out. Like I tried to get in with Montsor first semester and I definitely gave up because I was like, <laughs> it was like a three month wait. I mean, no, three week wait list out. Um, and then it was like, you get your referrals. Um, and this is more so for long term care, like therapy or like if you need something more serious like psychiatry. Um, that's all outpatient. So you get your referral list and then you have to go through and contact these practitioners. And you know, most of them are in their own practice. They've got their own regulars. So you might not be able to fit in. And you know, by that time when I did find someone who might fit, I forgot the process on how I actually start therapy. So I just gave up. But we figured it out this semester when they weren't as booked and busy and it has been helpful. And with the student health insurance, it's like $20 an appointment and they reimburse you for up to 10 sessions, I believe each semester. And you really can't get better than that. Um, I mean, they, they could just pay, they could get, I guess it could get better than that. Um, and then I guess things that I actually dislike, everyone sort of mentioned with admin, um, and I feel like a lot of things in Pomona are definitely to showcase like their diversity, how progressive they are. And Pomona is definitely more, more diverse. I think we're like rated the number one most diverse school. Um, they still could definitely do better in terms of supporting those students once they have matriculated. And the idea of getting transparency from admin is based on students holding admin accountable. Um, which can be kind of frustrating because no one wants to continuously hold these people accountable. But like Cuddy said, the best part is you can avoid a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction. It's just sometimes when they're doing big institutional changes, it's like in your face and you can't help but be annoyed, especially because in these underrepresented groups, when we were talking about fly students in particular, it very much starts to feel like unless other people are a part of affected groups, the larger campus has the privilege to not care. Um, when there was the issues going on with fly students, underrepresented minorities and their mentor groups, um, when it came to the town hall, the only people there were definitely the people being impacted. Um, and I can't help but think that on some of the other five C's, we might've gotten more outside support. And with stuff like this, it's important for us to have outside support because clearly our voices aren't as like enough on their own. So that can be mildly irritating too. And then continuing, what's your favorite class that you've taken so far? So I have two favorite classes thus far. Um, because I started off on the biology track and then I started to branch out more. And so I would say like outside of my particular major, my favorite class has been like geology, more in particular geohazards. And I would just say most people take the class as like an easy way out of doing STEM classes. Um, so the teacher there is like very accommodating if you've never, like if you're very um, inexperienced in STEM. Uh, Professor Moore and then another one. Uh, I don't remember the other professor's name, but Professor Moore is the class that I'm taking and she's very accommodating. And I personally just have like an interest in all thing rocks, like particularly planetary, on a planetary scale, but rocks are also fun, which is what I've just discovered. Um, and then the other class that I really like is astronomy with Professor Moreno. They're a very good teacher. Um, if, you ne if you literally have no idea what you're doing in STEM, they will always like explain their work. You don't even like need to know calculus to take that astronomy class, which is amazing. And they're also just very accommodating to I like fly and underrepresented minority students in particular and always just willing to hold conversations oop, about like the privilege that certain people in class hold, which I really appreciate. Um, I think for me, my favorite class I took was History of Africa to the 1800s, which is a class that kind of focuses on pre-colonial Africa. And it's taught by Professor Traore, who's extremely smart, extremely intelligent. And after talking with him, he kind of told me that the reason he introduced or teaches this class is to show that black people have a history outside of slavery, colonialization, imperialism, that they were kings, queens, royalty, and they had culture that doesn't involve um, bondage or 
any sort of pain or negativity? I think my favorite class has to be my Africana philosophy class that I'm taking this semester with Professor Mubuda Musalki um, at CMC. That class is very interesting. It's really the only class of its kind because obviously Africana philosophy is not offered anywhere else across the five C's. Um, that's a whole nother discussion. But um, the class is very engaging. Um, don't even think we even have like a final or anything like that. Like we have essays and so on and stuff, but discussion is very, is very nice, very engaging. Um, definitely recommend it for anyone who is interested in like being like or taking a philosophy class, not even just like wanting to be a philosophy major. Um, and anyone who's interested in taking philosophy and wants to take a class that isn't so Eurocentric, um, I would definitely recommend that class if it's being offered. Okay, my favorite class so far is actually a scripts class. It's taught by a scripts professor and a Pitzer professor, um, and it's called God and Philosophy, A Conflict and Reason. Um, you know, from the South, so every two weeks, maybe three weeks, we love like the crisis that it gives you. Um, and every week is sort of on different aspects of um, thoughts for religion, against religion and I'm we'll say this is mostly around like the Abrahamic religion um, but we've sort of talked about like the conflict of evil and also whether that even is a problem if you actually like look at biblical text um, whether it's like rational we sort of talked about Pascal's wager more in depth um, we've talked about like metaphysical arguments for God and I don't know, it's really awesome with the discussion because some of the class is like ardently atheist. Some are very much religious, some are Hindu, some have come from Buddhist families. Um, it's an experience um, and it will make you think, but it's only once a week and it's been wonderful. So yes. And um, any advice for incoming freshmen? Um, definitely, definitely keep in mind the resources you feel you will need coming into Pomona College and work your way into finding out how you can utilize those resources. Um, don't be afraid to ask your sponsors, which are the people who will be guiding you if you uh, are incoming. Don't be afraid to ask your professors. They're extremely nice here. Very rarely will they ever turn you down for anything. Um, and just, yeah, be mindful of all that. I would say choose the right people. People are nice, you know, friends are cool, but make sure they're the right friends, okay? Um, what else would I say? Don't date. What is the point? You know, you're especially being black, you're going to be rotating between the same three black men. And eventually, you like, you have to pick one. You're going to get caught up. Because, you know, like, <laughs> you have to pick one. Because after that one, like, you can't, it's a friend group. For me, the biggest piece of advice I would give to any incoming freshmen is to be open to change. I think college is a weird experience. And I think Pomona College specifically is a weird experience, especially if you're black. And there's going to be a lot of things that are new to you and a lot of experiences that you haven't necessarily had before but I would say take them with an open heart and be willing to move forward and learn from all the mistakes you make um, enjoy the people you meet and don't be afraid to ask for help um, two pieces of advice that I would offer um, number one being to start networking early if you haven't already start networking now talk to your professors um, go to the CDO we have the CDO on campus the career development office they'll help you with your resume they'll help you with cover letters um, talk to not just your advisor but talk to you know your law advisor or wh whoever it is that is uh, like dedicated to what you're interested in talk to them um, so just start networking now because college is the place to network second piece of advice would be don't think that you have to come into college dedicated to one specific thing, one specific major, one specific area of study. 
Um, you don't have to. People change their minds all the time. It's okay to drop classes your first week of, cl- of school. It's okay to pick up classes the next week. So really your first semester of college is meant to explore. It's meant to find out what you like, what you don't like. And yeah, I'd, I'd say it. Yeah, go. Sit down. I just want to say, especially for my pre-med students, oop, for my pre-med students out there, um, you will be kicking and screaming, and that's okay. Like, you have to recognize that that is okay. But you also have to recognize that if you are suffering, staying in your room crying, it's 5 a.m., you're looking at your problem set crying, it is okay to switch out of pre-med. You do not have to do pre-med to do biology. I promise you. I promise you. Please switch. It'll save your mental health. <laughs> okay. I would like to say get accommodated to the, well, get like adjusted to the idea of advocating for yourself because you're going to have to do that. You're going to have to do that, especially in classes where like you're not the most represented voice, even when the class subject is on people about you get used for advocacy yeah africana studies that whole department on god but anyway get you <laughs> get used to advocating for yourself when you're confused when you don't understand things when you start feeling overwhelmed when you feel you need something to do better um get used to like actually stepping out and going to the quantitative skills center and going to the writing center and going to office hours you're going to a liberal arts school there's no graduate students yes professors are doing research but i promise you the professors that are here are here first and foremost because they like the students um they like to teach they want you to come see them they will beg for you to come see them Um, And when that doesn't work, if the office hours don't work, shoot an email to these people. Um, So yes, get, please, not hot important. Second off, really find people who will support you with also the consideration that you will be equally as good a friend. Because when you're in college and people are trying new things for the first time, um, early on when people were just party hopping, people who've never been to parties, you know look out for people be a good person find people who will look out for you because you're going to need them I forget all the time that this is a good school that you're going to because that first biology class genetics really had me puking and crying and shaking and trembling but you know what we push through because of friends and supportive (laughs) okay not but But yeah, those are probably my two biggest pieces of advice. And you can add something. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm. Let's be serious here. I just. I want to say with all seriousness that you should. Find a good living situation, okay? You should, you deserve to be comfortable in your space. You know, your dorm room is your sanctuary. It's important to be able to come to your dorm and be at peace, okay? And I would also say, find the things that work for you. You know, find your study habits, your way of getting things done, And don't let people tell you what you should or shouldn't be doing if it's working for you. That's all I had to say. And the next question, what are classes like? You know, office hours, labs, sizes. What's all that like? I'll get to labs in a second, but class sizes are beautiful. I... I'm I'm over here complaining about like a 50 student class size and then my friends at a UC complaining about like a 300 intro class size. It's literally that dramatic of a difference because of how small the school is. And so in class, I, I, I can't speak for every single class personally, but very few of my classes have been lecture based and I've taken like a good majority of like STEM classes. And then the humanities classes that I have taken have been discussion based. So like no matter 
where you're at, whether you're on the STEM side or the humanities side, I feel like you have a very active role within the classroom. Um, more on STEM labs. Honestly, labs do push, like labs do push like at your boundaries a little bit, but I wouldn't say, I wouldn't like once you get past it, I wouldn't say that you're like traumatized from it. Like you kind of get over it. So it's not, I, don't, I would, I, <laughs> it's not that bad, you know? It's just in the moment, in the moment you're like very much doubting yourself in the moment you're like, oh my God, I literally cannot do a titration. But like, yeah, that word, tritation. But like, I feel like once you get through it, you stop over dramatizing like every single thing that you just did. And then you realize that you could probably do more than you expected, especially this is coming from someone who had like a very intriguing STEM program, I'll say. But like from someone who didn't come from a strong STEM background, you're going to do better than you think you are going to do in your classes just because of the structure of them. So, yeah. Um, well, I would say get used to talking to white people in your Africana classes. You know, I, I have to be honest, you, this is to be expected at a white institution, you know? And I even thought like, because it's Africana, okay, it's gonna be like majority black people. No, a lot of white students take those courses. And so even though they are discussion based, the discussions, discussion based, it's kind of disappointing to hear the white perspective on black issues. <laughs> I will, am I lying? <laughs> Anywho, um, I would say for me, I'm more of a the, on humani the humanity side, so I don't really take like STEM courses, so I don't do labs, but a lot of my classes, we do a lot of readings and discussions, and the readings that they do give us are very interesting. It's not like I'm, like I dread doing those readings. I like, I actually enjoy doing the readings that I get for class, and I'm actually excited to come to class to talk about them. So I think the classes at Pomona are very engaging. Professors really want to hear student input on things or the student perspective on the discussions that we have. Yeah, I will definitely say that um, as far as the humanities go, be prepared to um, speak, be prepared to lead discussions sometimes, be prepared to conduct a presentation in class, uh, be prepared to do a lot of reading, a lot of writing, um, and to engage with students who are non-black and then just for editing purposes if you're watching this this means the video was getting long and we split this Q&A into two videos so just sit there we gonna get it together give us we start from the bottom but we we appreciate y'all support have a wonderful day bye